Hi, Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm excited to share with you my current top 10. These are my top 10 for life, at least for the next six months, and I can't wait to share it with you. But before we get started, if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that button. I would love to have you part of the family. But um, with that said, I just want to say thank you to each one of you that watches. Uh, whether you're subscribed, whether you comment, no matter any of that, I recognize that you are giving me a piece of your time uh, whenever you watch one of these videos. So thank you so much for uh, inviting me into your day uh, by watching my weird little shenanigans. I so, so appreciate it. Uh, I recognize that you could give your time to anyone. And so the fact that you're actually watching uh, this content, it's very, very, uh, it's, it's wonderful and I really enjoy being able to do this. So thank you so much. And without further ado, let's get into this now. Um, I want you to, like most of you know me, so my guess is none of these will be a surprise, but what I thought would be really fun, if you wanna play, it can be a little bit of a game, uh, go ahead and pause the video, get yourself a drink or something, because the video might be a little longer. Go get yourself a drink, come back, write down what you think my top 10 will be. And then in the comments, tell me how many you got right. <laughs> you don't have to play if you don't want to, but I think it would be fun. So if you wanna play the game, go ahead, pause, write down what you think my top 10 will be, and then tell me how many you got right, okay? I'm gonna tell you how they make me feel. I'm gonna tell you, like these perfumes, they've gotta, they've gotta give me the feels, right? Uh, in order to be on this list. Let's just go, let's, let's go. The first one is La Belle by Jean-Paul Gaultier. This fragrance, I love the fact that the juice is pink. To me, it's exactly what it smells like. This perfume makes me so happy. Like seriously, when I put this on, uh, I feel happy, I feel sexy, I feel a little bit saucy and spicy. It's just amazing now this fragrance is very sweet it's got pear vetiver vanilla i know they've got lots of other notes but really i'm smelling spicy pear in this one with some vanilla it smells to me like a pear that's been cooked down in maybe some sort of a, a liqueur like a sweet liqueur and with spices like cinnamon and a few other spices maybe some nutmeg spices like that all cooked down into this delicious reduction kind of a pear syrup that's what this one reminds me of that said i also find this one just ever so sparkly like there's a bit there's a bit of an effervescent quality to this. So instead of it staying super duper sweet, uh, there's some sort of like a little bit of a saucy kick to it uh, that feels a little effervescent. So I enjoy wearing this one. In fact, the fact that I can smell it right now, like I, it's so beautiful. It makes me feel happy. It makes me feel girly. And like I said, a little bit sexy. So love, love, love this one. I always want this in my collection. Next fragrance is a discontinued one and it is Alien Essence Absolute. This one's deep. It's resinous. It's sexy. It's a little bit medicinal. Uh, this one is sultry and seductive. Like this to me is the epitome of seductive. When I smell this fragrance, what I think of is um, you live in a big mansion, like very fancy ma mansion, probably in the early 1900s because no one really lives in houses that huge anymore. But anyway, you came from money uh, and you were just a kind of a fancy ball. You get home, you put on a silk kind of negligee, you go into the great room and there's this big, huge fireplace, not like the fireplaces we have now. It's this giant fireplace with this roaring fire. And there's kind of like a, a some sort of fur that's uh, laying in front of the fire. And then you, there's this chaise lounge that's velvet. So you come down in your silk negligee and you're all warm by the fire. And then your man comes down and he's had a tuxedo on and he's kind of like, you know, scruffed himself up a little bit so he's not got the uh, tie on, the tie's kind of off kilter and he kind of looks a little bit like <laughs> Clark 
cable. You get the picture. You know where this goes. It's it's just awesome. I love it. It's spicy. Uh, it's sensual. I really, really enjoy wearing this fragrance. It's so, so beautiful. Now, this one is discontinued, but I do believe Juliana's perfume has an inspira inspired version of this one, which I haven't tried out yet, but want to. Uh, Frederico Mahora also has an inspired version of this one. Uh, I do have that one, and it's okay, but it, it lacks the depth that this one has. So I wanna smell the other one. Uh, no one quite gets it like Mugler. So this one is so gorgeous and definitely in a top 10. Next fragrance in my top 10 is Elisab Le Parfum Royal. Now, it was a toss up between this one and Delina, but because I don't have the actual Delina, I chose this one. So if I had had Delina, this one would have gotten bumped out. But I wanted a rose-centric fragrance that was sexy, feminine, but powerful, uh, a little bit um, formidable, and this is it. So this smells to me so luxurious, so rich. It smells like rose with some spices in it. Um, yeah, like, like a Middle Eastern rose to me. Uh, it, it's primarily orange, Orange, mandarin, orange, and a couple different kinds of roses is what you're getting. It's classy, um, it's sexy, but feminine, but powerful feminine. So this one is definitely a keeper. Plus it's affordable, like it's really quite reasonable. So love this one. Next fragrance I absolutely had to include in my top 10, and it's Sofia by Sofia Vergara. This fragrance just makes me happy. So when I smell this, I instantly think of a, a beautiful woman from the 50s, and she's wearing one of those dresses that kind of comes down quite tight and then has the big skirt, uh, kind of goes to her calf. She's wearing high heels, has nylon stockings. Her hair is just beautifully coiffed. Uh, she may wear a hat when she goes out, a little bit Jackie O uh, with the hat business and maybe even a set of pearls. That is kind of what this reminds me of. Uh, it's a little bit more youthful and feminine, but it's definitely rich smelling. This one has cassis and plum in it. Um, so I definitely get that plummy goodness in the cassis. I think that's what reminds me a little bit of Coco Mademoiselle because there's a classiness to this fragrance. This one is feminine, it's juicy, it kind of makes my mouth water a little bit, but it still has that classy aspect to it. So it's such a good one and it's so, so affordable. This one is going to be in my top 10, I think, forever. Like, I can't see myself actually ever getting rid of this one. Like, maybe eventually I'll get sick of it, but so far, uh, this is a major love. Being we talked about Sophia, we might as well talk about Coco Mademoiselle. This is one that I have to have in my collection, partially because it's it's kind of like these two are, are sisters. So this is the a little bit more cheery, youthful sister, a little bit more juicy. This one's a little bit more understated class, uh, very beautiful. Um, I just I just think that this is this is just beautiful. Now, when I think of this fragrance, this reminds me of a woman in this time period. She's uh, got on more of a fitted uh, dress, um, maybe with a suit jacket, uh, high heels, again, pearls, but kind of longer pearls. This woman, she knows exactly what she thinks. She speaks what she thinks, but she always does it in the most eloquent, and classy way. Like she doesn't blurt things out. If she has something to say and she needs to say it, she's gonna say it, but she's gonna say it in a way that's always dignified. That's Coco Mademoiselle. Now this has a warm kind of sweet orangey opening, which I absolutely love. Then you get some florals and then in the dry down, you get uh, some of that vetiver and there's I think a little bit of vanilla, there's the patchouli. Um, so a little bit of spice in this one, a little bit of woody notes, but it never feels weighed down. So for me, woody notes sometimes are iffy. But with something like this, that orange stays throughout. So this is so uh, wonderful. I think the thing that's cool about this is it's actually a long lasting citrus. 
So a lot of times citruses aren't going to last too long on the skin. This is going to last me 10-12 hours. So I just really, really enjoy Coco Mademoiselle. I just love this bottle. Like this is so iconic looking. Uh, it's just like I'm, I'm so in love with it. Okay, the next one is a summer fragrance that I have to have in my collection and it is Tom Ford's Eau de Soleil Blanc. Uh, this fragrance doesn't last long, like three hours, like it's pathetic in the performance. Uh, I just wish I had a huge, huge, huge bottle of it that I could just douse myself with it all the time. The reason why I like this one, it smells like a vacation. So even though it's got a poor performance, uh, it's my favorite uh, kind of vacation-y fragrance. So this smells to me like you're um, in the Mediterranean and you can smell like cypress trees or some sort of little bit of a pine quality or juniper type quality on the air. Uh, but then you're getting kind of that sunscreen, a little bit of a watery coconut. Um, it's just, it's beautiful. I think of uh, yacht in this one, you've got your fancy hat, I've said this a million times, fancy hat, long flowy gown on a yacht uh, with the beautiful Mediterranean coast at, at your disposal. So that's this one. I, yeah, as as far as uh, sunscreeny kind of beachy fragrances, this is definitely my pick. I wasn't satisfied with just having one sexy fragrance. I needed one other one that's like sexy, sultry. Like technically La Belle is sexy too, but I needed like another one that was just kind of like, oh, you know? And so I went with Noir Poor Femme by Tom Ford. Now, unfortunately, this one's discontinued too. Why? Why do they always discontinue the best fragrances? I don't get it. Like, I do not understand. Like C Fiori, it's the only C I really love they've discontinued it. And on that note, I should probably get a bottle because I really do enjoy that one. Anyway, back to this one. Noir Pour Femme, it smells like you're going to a very fancy dinner party. So I imagine it in New York, probably more in the winter time, but it could really be any time of the year. Um, it, you're dressed in a very, like a beautiful gown. So no short dresses with this one at all and uh, you arrive with your significant other. You've kind of been cuddled up in the back of the limo. You get out, you walk up the steps to this big brownstone in New York, and it's just quite a large, large house. They've got a little jazz trio going on uh, somewhere over near the fireplace. There's tons of people milling about, just kind of hobnobbing, and you're one of them. You smell rich, you smell put together, you smell like you know what you want and you're gonna get it later. <laughs> That's what this one smells like. I love the smell of Noir Pour Femme. There's a sweet vanilla quality, but it's tempered with, um, it smells a little bit like a dessert. So there's kulfi in this. I don't know what that is. The picture shows kind of this creamy, uh, I think it's a creamy uh, Indian dessert. And it just smells a little bit like a really delicious, slightly spiced cheesecake. Um, yeah, this one definitely is super, super sexy. And I, like with the top 10, I can't not have both of these, even though these are discontinued. Like what, what the heck? Three more to go. So the next one in my top 10 is So Scandal by Jean-Paul Gaultier. So this is the second Jean-Paul Gaultier and Tom Ford also got two in this list. Um, this one, it was a hard toss up because I really love Scandal of Harry too. I love all the Scandals except for the original. Uh, but this one, this one gives me that sweet bubblegum tuberose, uh, but like with that raspberry kick. Um, this is a little bit grapey. Some people think it smells like Lanterdi, but to me it smells like Lanterdi's uh, younger, more vibrant sister. She's a little bit giddy, maybe a little bit obnoxious, is, uh, is so scandal. Um, this has raspberry milk and tuberose in it. When I smell this, you know the song, and I'm happy clap along if you do, da da do 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 do, and we're happy do do do. You know that song? So that's 
what I think of when I smell this. Instantly, it puts me in a good mood. If I need a mood booster, it's going to be this one, likely, because it's just so cheery. Um, I even pulled this one out in the winter. It smells like a raspberry candy with two bros and a little bit of milkiness. I love this one. Um, it, it, I can see that people might consider it a little bit juvenile. Um, I don't care. Like, in fact, on that topic, you wear whatever you love. If I like something juvenile or something that everybody else likes, I don't care. I'm going to wear it and I'm going to smell fabulous. <laughs> like, yeah. So anyway, uh, love this one. It always puts a smile on my face. So scandal cannot not be in my top 10. So the next fragrance that I have for you is another summer fragrance and it is Terracotta by Guerlain. Now this fragrance, it's uh, definitely different than anything else I have in my collection. And um, whereas this one's kind of beachy, this one to me is a little bit more summery somehow and just uh, luxurious. So this one would be a classier fragrance in my opinion. Uh, although I can still imagine smelling this kind of uh, near a beach, but you're not wearing like a swimming suit or anything like that in this one. Somehow when I smell this, I totally think of like the luxury luxury life in the like late 50s, early 60s. The woman that wears this, she summers in a very fancy luxurious hotel in France. Um, she wears a scarf around her head when she drives in her convertible. Uh, she is served. Like, n she doesn't make her own food. She's very similar to Prada Boss Lady. Uh, it, but she has not... I don't think that the terracotta woman... I don't think she earned her money. I think she just came from money. Like, it's just always been there. Like, she's, she's known nothing. <laughs> she's known nothing but luxury and wealth. <laughs> so if I can wear this and feel that way, yeah, it's worth having it in my collection. Now this one, what I get primarily in this one is a yellow slash white floral with a bit of coconut and a, and the tiara. So it smells a little bit oily. It reminds me of Moroccan oil a bit, um, but I just think it's amazing. And as far as those kind of uh, goddessy summer fragrances. So between this and Bronze Goddess, definitely would go with this one. Uh, so I just love it. Interestingly, I've never smelt the Terracotta Bronzers by Guerlain. I need to do that so I know how close it is to this fragrance. Uh, but I just love it. I love the oily, buttery quality, but somehow it smells so sophisticated. So I love this fragrance for the summer. And I just find like you'd, uh, you'd think that like smelling it, because it smells quite heady, like there's quite a lot of floral in this, you would think that with all those florals in it, that it would be too obnoxious in the summer, but somehow in the heat, they just kind of melt into the skin and it just, oh, I just, I love this one. But this one's definitely not for everybody, I'm pretty sure. But it's in my top 10, not yours. <laughs> the last fragrance on my top 10 list is Trisardi's Donna. I am so thankful that I found this one. Again, listen to this. I don't know what it is about that, but I love putting the cap on this bottle. I love the way that sounds. Not sure why, but it's kind of addictive. Love it. Anyway, uh, love the bottle, the fragrance. Uh, I've talked about this one already recently. It's lemony. It's sweet. It's got a slight milky slash creaminess to it, almost like a lemon custard. Um, some people were asking me if this gets pastry-like. Not at all. It just smells like the filling. Uh, to me, that's the best way I can describe it. A lot of people do smell the florals in this as well. So um, yeah, what I get is just kind of a light lemon sweet fluffiness. Uh, and I just, I think it's beautiful. It's quite tart, uh, but not overly, over, overpoweringly uh, tart. And uh, um, one of one of the comments uh, on my Trisardi video was, "This is a freshie for non-freshie lovers," and I would have to agree. Uh, this is fresh. It's zesty, but not too zesty. It's got a little bit of substance and creaminess to it. Uh, again, smells 
put together and classy but uplifting and this one also on me has fantastic performance so I just have to have this in my collection so that is it um, out of my top 10 I can't pick a favorite um, I these are kind of my sexy these are kind of my sexy ones this kind of works anytime uh, sexy or day uh, love it for that uh, these are my sophisticated classy uh, feminine fragrances this one is my formidable tigress uh, this is my happy juicy kind of a little bit juvenile these are my two summer fragrances and then of course this one is a very uplifting as well like these two both uplifting uh, but this has just got a little bit more of a lemon kick. So I think I've got a really beautiful mix of fragrances. Um, if you didn't play my game, that's okay. Why don't you tell me what your top 10 is, or at least tell me your top three. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll probably have another top 10 in about eight months. <laughs> what do you do? Have an amazing week, and we'll talk to you soon.